in the, in the, in the world of Satan, in the occult. And he was still teaching me, said, why were you doing this? Why were you doing this? Why is it that when you are going to attack a man, you have to first break his marriage? Why is it that all the pastors that you were attacking, you had to first attack the wife? Now, we were doing it in the occult. I didn't know the principle, but I was doing the thing. Now, the Lord saves me, and I'm here. God takes me back and says, this is the principle. The man could be so strong, serving God, loving God. But if you attack the wife, and the wife stopped recognizing his authority, then he's not under any covenant. You can easily use the wife as a gate and overturn the throne. So I understood the principle. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? I am on the altar and the authority. Let me make a statement. I pray that you don't forget it. The worst curse that can happen to a man is another man sleeping with his wife. I'm not saying sleeping. I, I'm saying, I'm, you, you understand what I'm talking about? We are in the church. I don't want to be so bad. Are you going to I'm saying? Why? And listen to this. When a woman exposes her altar to another man other than the authority she's under, she has allowed this second man to access the inheritance and the secret power of wealth in the other man's life. Are you getting me? Through, and listen to this, witches, sorcerers, in order to make their businesses stand and their kingdom stand, they will always look for a married woman to defile, to have intimacy with her in order to access the secret power of her husband's wealth. In other words, that act only was the man may not even know your husband, but by you sleeping with that man, you sold the wealth of your husband and your children and their children and their children's children to the fourth generation. Praise the Lord Church. Are we together? What I'm teaching, is it making sense? I am back on what I'm talking about. Marriage in my father's house. My problem may be that my mother not only cheated my father, but through her altar, she sold all our inheritance to another family. Praise the Lord. And I find all, I have found this girl who mother did not recognize authority. Not only that, she sold this inheritance to several families. So in her hands, the girl I've married, there is no inheritance in her. Very beautiful. Very educated, even in church, but in her hands, she has no inheritance. She cannot build spiritually, though she's very loving. 
So this man will leave her and look for a one who is still carrying an inheritance in her hands. Praise the Lord. Someone say iniquity. Now, that's why this meeting today is very important. Why? We want the inheritance that was sold or exchanged restored in your hands as a mother that you may now build and multiply the inheritance of your husband. All things are possible to they who believe. In God, all things are possible. That's why we come to Christ. Because in him, we get an inheritance. Oh God. I said in him, we get what? An inheritance. But we first need to know the principle. You know, the problem in church, we pray for people and we don't teach them the principle. So every time they are making the same mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you tell people, do not fornicate. Do not commit adultery. But you do not explain to them the principle. This person will think it's just do's and don'ts, but they do not understand what is involved. Are you got what I'm saying? None of us can play with a snake. Eh? Because we know what can come from a snake. Are you getting what I'm saying? We know what comes from a snake. Therefore, if we knew these things, we will not defile our inheritance. Someone say altar. Say altar. Say authority. If someone preached this message on your wedding day, your life would be different. Not so. Not so. If someone preached this message a week before your, marriage, your wedding, your life would be different. Because you have not suffered the way you have suffered. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you getting that? I am on the topic. Marriage in my father's house. Now, in my father's house, what makes me is not the food I eat. It is the covenants in my father's house. Are you listening? All the my father's covenant, pre and post my birth, I carry them in my body. Are you getting me? Now, when I pick this girl, my wife, my wife, come here. Come, 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 come here. You know, in Africa, we just say, appear. You can stand here. When I meet this girl, as beautiful as she is, She's made up of her father's what? Covenants. So I've not married her. I have married her covenants. And she has married my covenants. Now, the two of us, we make a what? We make covenant and covenant. Then we make one covenant. Now, the covenant that will rule in this relationship with these two, eh? the one that is stronger. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? So, if her father's covenants are weak, but my covenants are strong. These covenants will submit to my covenants. And therefore, the ruling spirit in our marriage will be 
my father's spirit. You can see it. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? So, in marriage, you did not marry that girl or that boy. You married you married his father's covenants. Are you getting what I'm saying? Before I married, there used to be a reverend in a certain church in the cathedral in our city. After doing counseling, the last three days, to most couples, he could call me. Because he knew me and he knew what I, can, I do. And he could say, James, come and talk with these people about the spirit world. So he has done his work. Then I would go to the cathedral, meet these people, and we had our, our way of doing it. One of the questions I, could, I used to ask couples was, do you know the spirits in him? Do you know the spirits in her? And all the couples I asked this question, you could, you could see the shock. Spirits? Spirits? That would be the first question. Spirits? Then they could ask, Spirits like what? Then I begin to mention spirit of poverty. Eh? Then a spirit of rebellion. Oh, oh. Spirit of adultery. Is it true? You mean it can be there? Spirit of barrenness. Okay. Now let's talk, man of God. Now we need to talk. I could mention like possible spirits that can, could, can be in a person. And you see people saying, all we postpone. Because I could explain to these couples that, look, if we don't deal with these, if they happen to be there, that day you marry, they will, be, they will receive double strength. Because they would have received another spirit that will now strengthen them. Spirit of robbery. Spirit of anger. Spirit of manipulation. Spirit of cannibalism. Spirit of stealing. Praise the Lord. And I could tell these people to go in a corner and write possible spirits they think are not good in them. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I tell them, look, sit there and write. It may not be true. Just write. What you think may be there. And they begin the list. One by one they sit. There, another one there. I used to love this exercise. So I tell them, after you have written, bring the paper to me. Don't show anyone. So they bring the piece of paper, each after writing. And I say, now, I am going to exchange I am going to give him your paper and I'm going to give her your paper. Sabi would want to jump and grab the paper from me. No! <laughs> then I could say, should I? A man of God, let me first read again. Then I tell them, you are not yet ready for marriage. 
You don't want him to see this list. But these are the things he's marrying. He's, to he's taking the cotton and the seeds. In two days, he's receiving this list. And in two days, you are receiving this list. And know that these are not just words. These are forces that may appear two, three, one, four, five, ten, twenty years empowered. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, are you ready to write the list? There are many years. Eh? Now all the things are mingled together. But this, after the listing exercise, we could now sit and say, if it's there, all not there, let's pray. Let's deal with this. And some couples, two, the two I saw, others, but two, asked to postpone the wedding. Praise the Lord. When we got married some two years ago after, we married five years ago, but two years ago, I think, our pastor's daughter was married. So I shared with him what I used to do. And he said, come and check my daughter before she goes. I was busy, so I went on the last day, the next day to the wedding. We went with my wife. So we began checking and we prayed, hey, this is a pastor's daughter. The manifestation, the demons. You know when the wedding is the next day, the home is busy. Eh? Many people, all the relatives, people were saying, what is happening to the bride? Demons were leaving, screaming and what? And for three hours, we are doing deliverance on this girl. And the father said, I thank God. All these things, my daughter, she was going with them in someone who's son. Very beautiful girl. Beautiful. Pastor's daughter. But loaded. The poor boy is waiting to marry a beautiful girl, a news anchor, loved and known in the nation, waiting to marry, not knowing that the next day, by midday, he would have acquired all this baggage. Hmm? Praise the Lord. So after deliverance, she calls the boy and said, before tomorrow, make sure before you see me, you, have, you must talk to Pastor James. And, I, and Pastor James will call me and tell me whether we marry or not marry. So the boy called and said, Pastor James, what have you done to my wife? She's telling me ABCD. So I tell him, wherever you are, locate me. Because for her, we have finished. I am not sure of you. I am not sure that now you are not the defiled well. Praise the Lord. In the night around midnight, we met. We talked and talked and talked and told him, now it's late. First of all, you are going to marry. But before you go to honeymoon, you must come for deliveries. T tomorrow marry, Sunday don't go for honeymoon. Don't even sleep with her. Come for deliveries. After deliverance, go for honeymoon. Otherwise, I'm not sure. 
if your marriage will stand. And he said, what is it? What demon did you see in her? I said, no, I'm not going to tell you the demons I saw in her. The demons I'm seeing in you. Praise the Lord. I am seeing the demons in who? In you. I didn't want to tell him that there were demons in her. Praise the Lord. I thank God that they obeyed. They are married. They have their child now. And they are grateful that they went through that experience. I pray that your daughters and sons can go through that experience. Because you missed it. But I'm giving you this principle, teaching you that it is not what you see around your home if it's bad. It's not what you see in your husband and your wife. It is what the two of you came with in this deal. Amen. He is rude. He is bad, as you say. He may be what you call him. But that one that you see, it was just dormant in him. It is the demons in you that awakened it. It was the demons in you that charged the thing. The younger man was okay before he married you. But when he married you, the spirit of fornication from your mother now charged him. That's why he's fornicating every day. I'm a bad preacher, not so. Praise the Lord. She was okay. A humble girl. But when she came in you of your life, the controlling spirit, the demon of your mother, just now went in her and she became another Jezebel like your mother in your house. Praise the Lord. And every day we are dealing with leaves. The root is my father's house. Praise the Lord. Say my father's house. Say my father's house. Praise the Lord. There is a prayer I want to pray before I continue. In my book, there is a prayer I want us to pray. Write it if you don't have my book. Every authority of satanic union in my father's house be nullified in the name of Jesus. Say it again. Every authority of satanic union in my father's house be nullified in the name of Jesus. Say so every authority of satanic union in my father's house today I nullify you and deliver my inheritance the inheritance of marriage the inheritance of wealth the inheritance of long life I deliver my inheritance from satanic unions of my father's house. I deliver my marriage. I deliver my wealth. I deliver my children from the consequences of satanic unions of my father's house. In the name of Jesus. You have authority and power in the name of Jesus to nullify and cancel all satanic covenants that you may have married into. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
You remember I told you, on earth, other than the new covenant in the blood of Jesus, there is no other covenant higher in authority and power than the covenant of marriage. Even the people that want to take the land, they will enter into a marriage covenant by marrying the land. That is how they can take the land. Because marriage is a high covenant. Are you learning what I'm saying? So, you, I told those who were around, that whatever covenant I have got involved in, if I come with my wife, in our covenant of marriage, we can cancel and nullify all the covenants, including my father's and my parents' covenant. Hear this. My wife's father, on the day of marriage, he got, took all the authority he had over her and gave it to me. That's why he walked with her and brought her to me. That is a, an act that from today I have given you my authority. Therefore, his, his covenants, his curses, his sins can work in her life if I don't deal with them. But if I stand as a husband and said, today, I deliver you from the greed, the gratton of your father. She is free from that. Because the father gave me authority, transferred authority to me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now listen. My bondages are strong by the covenants of my mother's womb. As a man, praise the Lord. And when I grow up, I marry. When I marry, I am no longer connected and attached to my mother's womb because now I have been given another womb as an altar. Praise the Lord. Therefore, whatever is following me my wife can lay hands on her womb and release me. You have missed it. My wife, by laying hands on her womb, she has the spiritual power to say today, I command wealth to my husband. Today, I command long life to my husband. Today, because she's an altar, the spirit realm recognizes her prayers. Are you learning? Are you getting something? These are truths that you not find in many places. Amen. Amen. I you hear what I'm saying? The two, me and my wife, we have, we are accepted in the speed realm to nullify, to cancel any covenant. The only covenant we cannot cancel and nullify is the covenant in the blood of Jesus because that is higher than any other covenant. Whether it is occultic, all sorcery, all whatever. The moment she and me agree that we don't want this using our marriage covenant, it is null and void. Praise the Lord. What are we looking at? Marriage in my father's house. Today your prayer and your wife your prayer and your wife is that prayer that I nullify, I cancel every satanic union in my father's house 
that may be rising and claiming our inheritance. Praise the Lord. Someone say, I deliver my marriage. <laughs> say, I deliver my children. I deliver my business. I deliver my sons. I deliver my inheritance from satanic unions of my father's house. From satanic unions of my father's house. I deliver my children from satanic unions from evil unions of my father's house. Praise the Lord. I say it and I will say it again. For those that have not been around but also for to go deeper that the worst curse that happened to a man is when another man sleeps with your wife. That is, they are cursing by words, but that curse is so deep that it exchanges inheritance. Praise the Lord. It says what? In fact, in the Bible, Old Testament, the punishment is boils, wasting disease. Huh? The woman could be made to drink the dust of the temple and they pronounce a curse on her. And the woman and the man is not allowed to have intercourse with her again because he doesn't want now to access the curses that have been deposited in her. Praise the Lord. Now this is the that that that. that I want to, to, to say this. Look at this. Look at this man, James, not this one, but James, who leaves his wife to go and sleep with a woman who has four men. Hmm? All the four men have transferred curses into this woman. Eh? And this James, not this one, will goes to this one and he picks four times ten curses carry them in his body and bring them to this girl. But this man, and listen, this man is so evil that he does not tell this girl that I have messed in a covenant. Let us join the hands we cancel the other covenants before we sleep. Hmm? But he comes as if nothing has happened. Cleans the mouth. Loaded with curses from an evil altar of a prostitute carries the curses and in his authority he has not cancelled the curses but he continue to transfer the curses into this girl who unfortunately 
that night conceives. And the girl conceived is one of you sitting here. Are you, are, you, are you here? This is a prostitute. Ten curses. Her altar is now an altar of demons. She has multiple curses in her womb. She has multiple curses on her breasts. Because the Bible talks about the blessing of the womb and of the breast for the 925 Genesis. Are you going to say? Now, at the time of an evil satanic union, he picks all these curses, all these demons, and carry them to this beautiful wife. And unfortunately, because of his behavior, she's so hurt that she has also, she has someone who relieves her pain somewhere. As he goes to his many women, also she goes to her shamba boy. So that day when, she, when he comes back, it is the same day she was with her painkiller. And loaded with all the curses from the painkiller because the painkiller also has others. Even he wants to marry because he knows he can't marry this one. So painkiller has eight. Authority has picked ten. They bring ten and eight together and form eighteen. And in the middle of the 18, amidst the 18, unfortunately, Mama conceives. And conceives and gives birth to this boy. Are you getting what I'm saying? This boy, by the age of 13, he has now bore girls. At 21, he marries the worship leader in church. Loaded with 18 and his. These people, they are always fighting. These people are not in agreement. Why? The covenants in them are the one fighting. They never agree because this is Kenyan covenant, this is Somalia covenant, this is Bugana covenant, this is Acholi covenant. So they marry and the covenants are always crashing. Pah! That's why you say one word, the answer is a slap. Are you going to saying? Because covenants are kicked, they can't agree. Why? You have a man in your body and this man is now always fighting the spirit of the other man. So two men are fighting like Esau and Jacob. Praise the Lord. Someone says satanic unions of my father's house that introduced iniquity of marriage failure in the name of Jesus. Today, today, I and my wife, I cancel them now in Jesus' name. Now listen, friends. These unions, these covenants I'm talking about, curses, each one has its familiar, its, its working spirit. One may be poverty, 
Another one may be premature death. Another one may be foolishness. Huh? <laughs> yes. Because they must, the devil wants to show, to display what he can do. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, he, it may be poverty. And you are breaking poverty, you are breaking curses, not knowing that this girl, she carried the spirit of poverty from the boyfriends she slept with in primary five. And you didn't take time to ask her, my dear, were you delivered? Eh? Even she did not bother. And you know, I've discovered that devil, because he's a killer, the loaded ones, very loaded, he gives them husbands quickly. Those girls that are sleeping with every boy in the village, they get married fast. And the one that is holy, loving God, she doesn't. Because God is protecting her. Praise the Lord. These ones who are like everyone who's a amusement, everyone in the village, oh, within days she's married. She divorces, she remarries. At third, she has married three times. She's not blessed. She's just a carrier and a destroyer of destinies. She carries demons. That's why she divorced here and married here. Someone was telling me, you know, pastor, ah, I want the blessing of my mother. I said, why? Do you know my mother has remarried three times, weddings? My mother has three weddings. And I told her, sister, you want that? You want three weddings. Do you know why? She divorces here and all the men die. She married, the man died. Remarried, the man died. Now she was on the father and I told her, hey, wait. She's a killer of men. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Someone say, every satanic union in my father's house Today, in the name of Jesus, I nullify. I nullify. In the name of Jesus, say evil agreements of my ancestors with evil spirits against marriages, against success, against success. In the name of Jesus. Today, we cancel them. We nullify them by our agreement. Me and my spouse. In the name of Jesus. I want to finish with one point. Praise the Lord. This is what is killing, what is bringing poverty and killing marriages. It is a spirit that is working in many people's lives, but from their father's houses. The spirit of Jezebel. Say Jezebel. There is no acquired Jezebel. Jezebel is born. Everywhere you find the spirit of Jezebel, it is in the blood. No one can teach a man or a woman to be controlling to be manipulating, to be false, to be not submissive, it is born. If it's in a woman, you know it is from 
the house. And when we talk about the Jezebel spirit, many people think of 